In this video, I'm going to be going over exactly how much dividend income I made in the month of April from a $171,000 account and to analyze this, we're going to be jumping into my do-it-yourself investor toolkit and looking at my investment dashboard, my dividend dashboard, my dividend calendar, my daily dividend calendar. We'll also be looking at things like my portfolio projection to see how long it will take for me to be able to one day live off dividends, which is the end goal for my dividend portfolio. And like always, if you'd like to be able to download this spreadsheet or any of my other spreadsheets and also get access to the ticker data add-on in Google Sheets, then you can head over to tickerdata.com at the link in the description. I'd also like to say thank you to Seeking Alpha for sponsoring this video but more on that later okay so let's go ahead and jump into it now if we go ahead and zoom in and start breaking down my investment dashboard first thing you'll notice portfolio value sitting at about $171,000 now last month it was sitting closer to around 169 or 170 so a slight increase this month but we have to keep in mind over the past month the market is actually down close to around 3% so we saw a drawback in the S&P 500. Now I still had quite a few positions in my portfolio that were pretty big winners and for example if we look at one of the positions in my personal portfolio right now which is Domino's Pizza. They just released their latest quarter's earnings and they are up pretty big on the day. We can see over the past year up around 47% but in the past five days alone up around 8%. So yes the market has been down over the past month but I definitely have still had some winners in my personal portfolio. Now it's also important to remember that my portfolio value doesn't just grow when I contribute new capital and when I see gains in my positions, we also have to remember I'm constantly reinvesting all the dividends that come into my portfolio. So if a stock pays me a $100 dividend payment, not only do I reinvest that back into my portfolio, meaning my portfolio grows by $100, but that also means that stock will now be paying me more in dividends in the future. And again, this is one of the many ways that the compounding effect can take place. Now, if we come down here, we can see my gain loss purely from capital gains sitting at about $27,000. So again, there's a big misconception that dividend investors only see gains from their dividend payments. That is simply not true. I've already seen over $27,000 in capital gains, which is around a 19% return. Now, we can also see I've seen around $1,350 from realized gains. And when we include that, as well as the dividends I received, I'm up around $35,000, which is around 24.54%. So I am very happy with the performance of my portfolio so far. Now let's go ahead and take a moment to talk about my portfolio's current allocation. If we go ahead and zoom in and look at this chart, we'll scroll down. We can see as of right now, my cash position for this portfolio is sitting at about 10.7%, which comes out to around $20,500, meaning I'm around 89% in stocks. Now my cash position is down just a little bit this month because I contributed to several positions this month and also added an entirely new position to my portfolio, which is not something that I do often. Now, whenever I buy a new stock or invest capital into already existing positions in my portfolio, I want to make sure it aligns with my long-term goal. And we have to remember, the long-term goal for this portfolio is to one day be able to live off dividend income. And so while it's tempting to invest into high yielding dividend stocks, in reality, the best way to one day live off dividend payments is to make sure you're buying quality companies that can increase the amount they pay out in dividends at a high rate every single year. So let's go ahead and look at an example. The most recent dividend stock I added to my portfolio will come up here and plug it in, UNH, and hit enter. And you can see all this data is going to automatically load in thanks to the help of the ticker data add-on in Google Sheets. Now, when we look at this company and look at the dividend data at first glance, it doesn't seem very impressive. We can see the starting dividend yield for this company sitting at about 1.54%. So that's a pretty low starting dividend yield and a healthy payout ratio at around 30%. So why do I think this is a company that will help me achieve my long-term goal of living off dividends? Well, there's a couple of different things we have to keep in mind. Like I just said, I wanna make sure I buy quality companies that can constantly increase the amount they pay out in dividends every single year. Now, where did dividends come from? As dividend investors, we have to remember dividends don't just come out of thin air. They have to come from the company. They come from the company's free cash flow. And like I've talked about so often on the channel before, there's five different things a company can do with their free cash flow. They can reinvest back into the business. They can buy back shares, attempt mergers and acquisitions, pay down debt, but they can also pay out dividends. So if they're going to be increasing their dividends every single year, they have to increase their free cash flow per share every year. And look at just how well this company is doing this. 2013, their free cash flow per share was sitting at $5.80. 2023, $27.67. So this company has rapidly increased their free cash flow per share over the past decade. And you guessed it, this means they have rapidly increased their dividend payouts per share. In fact, let's go ahead and jump over to my dividend breakdown tab. Come up here, plug in UNH and hit enter. 
If we come down here and look at the yearly dividends, just like their free cash flow per share, their yearly dividend payouts have exploded as well over the past decade, going from $1.05 per share to $7.29, and with their most recent dividend hike, $7.52. Now here's what's really important to understand during this time period as well. Their free cash flow payout ratio is only sitting at 26.33%. That means they're only using 26% of their free cash flow to pay out dividends, leaving around 75, 76% of their free cash flow left to reinvest back into the business, buy back shares, basically left to grow the company. That's exactly what I'm looking for with my dividend stocks, and that's what I believe will help me achieve my long-term goal of living off dividend payments at the fastest rate possible. Now, if we scroll down here, we can see my total holdings currently sitting at about 30. Now, that is what it was last month, but I added a new position, but we have to keep in mind, I also sold out of my IBM position during the last month, and I saw around a 47% gain from that position, and it was paying decent dividends, but I just don't trust them to grow their free cash flow per share at a high enough rate to grow their dividend payments at a high rate. So I made the switch, sold that position, and added UNH to my portfolio. Now, if we go ahead and zoom back in, let's look at my cost and market value charts. This is basically a way to show the cost of each of these positions versus the current market value, and it's kind of visualized easier by looking at at the individual growth of each of these positions. And as you can see, yes, I do have a couple of losers, but for the most part, I'm pretty happy with how my positions have done. And my three most recent positions are all doing pretty well also, Waste Management, this was a stock I added last year, currently up around 36.5%. Louis Vuitton, this is a stock I added early this year, early 2024, already doing very well, up around 19.23%. And UNH, again, just recently added this last month, up around 7.32%. So it's easy to look at these stocks and be excited about their short-term performance. But here's the thing, even if these stocks were down 10 or 20% as of right now, I would still feel great about these positions because I'm holding them long-term and I think they'll help me achieve my long-term goal of living off dividends. They're going to continue to generate growing free cash flow and growing dividend payments. So yes, it is fun to see these short-term returns, but it's really not the focus. I'm focused on the long-term, and in fact, it's actually a good thing if they go lower. Because if these stocks go lower, I can buy more shares, and I can also reinvest dividends at a lower price per share, which will in turn give me even more dividend income. Now, if we look at some of these other positions I've been holding for longer, we can see Broadcom. My biggest winner, I'm up around 163% on this position. We have Caterpillar, I'm up close to 100%. JP Morgan, it looks like around 83.64%. One of the positions I've been holding for a while that I really like. Domino's Pizza, I'm up around 60%. Bank of America, around 40%. Microsoft, over 50%. We can see Coca-Cola, around 34%. And EPD, I'm currently up around 40%. Now, there's obviously plenty of other positions that are performing pretty well, but those are the big hitters as of right now. Along with Visa, I'm up around 36.63%. Now, if we scroll up here, we can see how my portfolio is currently diversified. And the first thing you'll notice is SCHD, the Dividend Growth ETF, makes up the vast majority of my current portfolio at around 47.7%. SCHD has such a strong history of price appreciation and dividend growth that it just makes sense to be a large part of my personal portfolio because I can buy it and feel perfectly comfortable with it long term. But other than that, we can see Microsoft is the second largest position, currently coming in at around 7.6% around of my portfolio. And then we have Vici. This is another decently large position in my portfolio, currently makes up around 3.9% of my portfolio. And this is another one of the stocks that I actually added some capital to over the past month. Come down a little bit lower, another position I really like is Visa. Now, Visa currently makes up around 2.4% of my portfolio, but I really like them long term. And I actually added some new capital to them this month as well. Now, if we scroll down even further, we can see my stock allocation by individual industry. Again, SCHD, the ETF I own, makes up around half of my portfolio, but other than that, we can see technology coming in at around 15%. We have real estate, 7.2%. Industrials, around 4%. We have financial services, 7.6%. Looks like consumer cyclical comes in at about 8.1%, but we also have healthcare at 4%, and then consumer defensive at 5.1%. Now, the last thing that I really like to touch on here is the future portfolio outlook. It gives you a good outlook on what your portfolio could look like in the future, but we're actually going to come back and touch on this just a little bit later. So now I want to get to the part that everybody wants to see, and that's how much dividend income I made in the month of April. So let's go ahead and start zooming in just a little bit. Now, the first thing you can see, my average monthly dividends is now all the way up to $445. That's $445 in passive income 
on average going into my portfolio every single month. There's nothing that I have to do to continue to receive that income. Again, completely passive. And here's what's beautiful. Even if I don't contribute another dollar to my portfolio, that number is going to continue to increase over time for two reasons. I'm reinvesting my dividends, meaning if I don't contribute capital to my portfolio, on average, I still have $445 being reinvested right back into my portfolio. That's a huge player in the compounding effect. But we also need to remember, again, just like we saw earlier with UNH, this is a company that's constantly increasing the amount that pay out in dividends. So because I hold those types of companies in my portfolio, this number is going to continue to increase as well. And those two factors alone play a major role in causing the compounding effect to take place. And with my average monthly dividends now at 445, we can see my expected yearly dividend income sitting at $5,341. Think of that for just a moment. If your average expenses every single month comes out to around $4,000 and your dividend income is sitting at $5,000, that means your dividend income could buy you an entire month of freedom. So as someone looking to live off dividend income, it's important to not just look at the numbers, but think about the freedom that the dividend income can buy you. Now let's go ahead and start zooming in. And again, we can see how my portfolio has grown over time. I've been going over this for quite some time now. And again, it was just a slight increase over the past month. Not a whole lot because the market was down, but if we come down here, we can see my historical monthly dividend income. And it's really started to explode over the past year. And in the month of April, I made $301.29 in passive dividend income. Now we can see the month before that was actually quite a bit higher at around $843. And that's because that's when SCHD, my largest position, the dividend growth ETF, paid me their quarterly dividend. Now my highest month ever was $934 in December. And December is typically when SCHD, again, the dividend growth ETF pays out their largest dividend every single year. But we're kind of starting to see a trend with my positions. We can see a relatively high month followed by a couple of lower months, high month, couple of lower months, high month, couple of lower, higher, lower, higher, lower. So basically what we're seeing is we're definitely trending in the right directions and the highs are getting higher and the lows are getting higher as well. So that's very encouraging to start to see the snowball take off. Now, if we come down just a little bit lower, we can see my projected annual dividend income again. Projected annual dividend income is telling me how much I'll make in dividends projected annually. And we've seen a slight bump up over the past four months. We can see as of the start of this year, my projected annual dividend income was slightly below 5,000, sitting about 4,956. But every month since then, we're seeing it jump up a little bit higher and a little bit higher. And again, that's from three things that I've already talked about contributing new capital, reinvesting dividends, but also the positions in my portfolio, increasing their dividend payouts. Now, it's important to remember that starting out in your dividend investing journey, contributing capital is the fastest way to grow your income. But as your portfolio grows, reinvesting dividends and also the companies you hold increasing their dividend payouts will actually increase your dividend income faster than when you contribute new capital. And I think that's starting to be the case for my personal portfolio. If we come up here, we can see my dividend income by industry. This is basically telling me where my dividend income is coming from. Again, you don't want all of your dividend income coming from any one place because that could be a potential risk. So for example, if real estate made up around 50% of my dividend income, that probably would be a bad sign. But in my portfolio, real estate only makes up around 13% of my dividend income. We can see technology around 6.7, consumer defensive around 9.3, financial services around 5, consumer cyclical around 4.4, and then again, SCHD, the ETF, gonna make up most of my dividend income in my portfolio. Come down a little bit lower, we can see my dividend yield on costs. For the most part, I do focus on quality dividend growth companies that a lot of the times have lower starting dividend yields, but we have to keep in mind the dividend yield on cost is going to increase as these companies increase the amount they pay out in dividends. But lastly, if we come over here and look at my dividend income by each individual stock, we can see a few of the positions are paying me quite a bit in dividend income. For example, SCHD currently pays me around $2,806 every single year in dividends. We have Vici Properties paying me around $385. Realty income, 314. We have Altria Group right at $350. And then a couple of other larger positions like Texas Instruments pay me around $170. Now, the next thing I wanna do is jump into our dividend calendar. But first, I wanna quickly tell you about our sponsor, Seeking Alpha. Seeking Alpha is a service I've been using for many years now, and I'm a huge fan of what they have to offer. So let me quickly show you their favorite features. Now, one of the stocks I had been talking about was Domino's Pizza. I've been researching them quite a bit lately. If we come up here and click on DPZ, we're gonna be able to pull a lot of information very quickly from the company. Yes, we have some quick analysis metrics right here that we can see their price performance and some other earnings 
earnings and dividend metrics here, but we can dig even deeper into this company with what Seeking Alpha has to offer. If we click on financials, we can see all three financial statements. We can see a lot of the history when it comes to their earnings report, which I really like to look at, but most importantly, we can get a deep dive into their dividend metrics. We can see dividend yield metrics, dividend growth metrics, dividend safety metrics, and of course, their dividend history, which is something that is very important to me. Now, if we keep moving and scroll up, we can also get some quick valuation metrics, such as price to earnings metric, but if we scroll down even more, we can see things like price to sales, price to book, and price to cash flow, something that a lot of people don't look at that's pretty valuable information. If we jump over to growth, we can see how the company's been growing and how they're projected to grow in the future. And then if we look at profitability, this is something I look at pretty frequently. We can easily see things like their gross profit margin for the trailing 12 months, as well as a lot of really other important metrics, such as return on total capital. And if you just so happen to research Domino's Pizza on Seeking Alpha, be sure to read the article I recently put out on Seeking Alpha about them. Again, link to Seeking Alpha in my description down below. Okay, so if we jump back into my dividend portfolio, the next thing I want to look at is my dividend calendar. And this is one of the most underrated ways to track your dividend payments over time, simply because it allows you to see how much each position has paid you in dividend income over the lifespan of your holding. You can also see how much each of these holdings has paid you total every single month. And most importantly, you can see how your dividend payments have grown. So for example, if we zoom in, Realty Income is always my favorite example because this company increases the amount they pay out in dividends every single quarter, and they pay out dividends every single month. So if you're reinvesting dividends, you can see this number is going to increase every single month. And for example, back in January of 22, I received a $5.83 dividend payment from Realty Income. But if we keep moving forward, we can see these dividend payments are continuing to increase, continuing to increase, and all the way to April of 24, we can see that dividend payment has increased to $26.23. So again, this is a very cool way to see how your dividend payments have grown over time. So let's go ahead and see exactly what positions paid me dividends in April of 2024. Now the first one was KHC. They paid me a dividend of about $1.76. We then have Coca-Cola at $21.24. Altria Group with a fairly big dividend payment of $87.33. Realty Income, $26.23. Scroll down, we can see Vici paid a big dividend, $74.62. Bank of America, around $21. Domino's Pizza, around $12. JP Morgan, about $12, Jeppy, around $8.68, a small dividend payment from Cisco, Broadcom, one of my favorite dividend growth stocks at $16.26, and then I received my first dividend payment from Louis Vuitton Ever, one of the newer positions in my portfolio, and it came in at around $18.05, and again, this totaled out to a little over $300 on the month. Now, the next thing I want us to look at is my daily dividend calendar. So this is just a simple way to see exactly how much dividend income I received on each individual day, and I've been tracking this for a while now. We can see my 2022 dividend calendar, exactly how much I was paid on each day, my highest day in 22 was around $42 and total dividends in 2022 at close to $1,300. If we look at 2023, highest day was $730 with total dividends around $3,500. And if we look at 2024, here's what's actually very crazy. Look at my 2024 total dividends so far, $1,504. Look at 2022 total dividends for the entire year, under $1,300. So in just four months of 2024, I've already passed what I did in the entire year in 2022. Pretty exciting to see the compounding effect take place. And if we zoom in just a little bit, we can see exactly how much I received each day. And it looks like the first few days of April were pretty big days. It came in at around $156 total. We had a $26 dividend payment on the 15th. And then near the end, we can see I received around $120 in dividends with a big day on the 30th of around $99.31. So with all this being said, how far away am I from being able to live off dividend payments forever? And we're gonna be looking at my dividend portfolio projection and live off dividends analysis to figure this out. Now we can see the assumptions I have right here. My starting portfolio size sitting at about 171K and I'm assuming a price growth rate of 7%, dividend growth rate of 7% and the starting dividend yield of around 3.5%. Then I'm making monthly contributions and the goal for this on average is to be around 2,500. I know that's relatively high. I am trying to be very aggressive, but we have to keep in mind, this is an average, a lot of months, it's not gonna be this high. But keep in mind, my current cash position is around $20,000, so I am prepared to contribute more when opportunities present themselves. Now, if we jump over to my cost of living tab, there's a couple of things we have to remember. Inflation compounds over time just like any other investment. So if my cost of living right now is around $4,000 and the average inflation rate moving forward is around 2%, in 30 years, 
my cost of living could be around $7,250 every single month. That's a pretty big jump up, and it's something a lot of people don't account for, but it's definitely something we have to think about. Now, again, when it comes to inflation, obviously, over the past few years, it's been quite a bit higher than 2%, but again, that is the average around over the past 100 years. So in order to be able to live off dividends forever, we have to get my monthly dividend income on average above this black line and it has to stay above this black line. So if we jump over to my live off dividends analysis, we can see right here, this point at which the red line crosses the black line is the point at which I could live off dividend payments forever. Now I get a lot of questions, what if you quit reinvesting dividends at that point? Well here's the beautiful thing if you buy dividend growth stocks. If you buy dividend growth stocks and your monthly dividend payments is above your cost of living, even if you stop reinvesting dividends, you can still live off dividends forever because your dividend growth rate will be above the rate of inflation. And that basically means your red line is going to continue to grow at a rate higher than this black cost of living line. So if we come over here, let's go ahead and figure out exactly how long it will take for us to be able to live off dividends and we can see some other metrics as we go along the way. If we start scrolling down, we can see after about five years, looks like we're still not there and we're still missing it by actually quite a bit. So let's go ahead and keep going. After around 10 years, we can see we're still not there. Keep scrolling down just a little bit further and it looks like in around 15 years, I'll be close to achieving my goal because my monthly dividend payments will then surpass my monthly cost of living. And here's what's really impressive. My total contributions during this time period would be around $621,000, but my account value would be over three times that much at around $1.85 million. And the total dividends I'll receive during that time period at around 421,000. So let's go ahead and zoom just a little bit further out. Let's look at 20 years out and see how this changes. 20 years out right here, we can see things start to get pretty crazy. My monthly dividend payments could be at around $10,700, assuming I'm still reinvesting dividends with my monthly cost of living at about $6,052. If we wanna get a more broad overview of this, we can actually jump back over to my investment dashboard and come all the way down. This gives us a quick overlook at how my portfolio could look whether I'm reinvesting dividends or not reinvesting dividends. So let's jump over to not reinvesting dividends first and look at where I could be in five years. In five years, assuming I don't reinvest dividends, I could still be receiving around $14,600 annually in dividend income. But if I do reinvest dividends during this time period, it jumps up to around 16.8K. But here's where things start to get crazy. If we go back to not reinvesting dividends, let's look at 20 years. It'd be around 67.8K, but if I do reinvest dividends, it jumps all the way up to 116K. But here's where the compounding effect really takes place long term. If we look 30 years from now, if I don't reinvest dividends, I could have annual dividends of around 148K, but if I do reinvest dividends, it jumps all the way up to 342K. That's more than double. And that is the power of the dividend snowball effect. So that's how much dividend income I made in the month of April, and it's also an overview of my personal portfolio. So despite the fact there's a lot of rumors right now of recessions, it's an election year, and a lot of volatility in the market, as a long-term dividend growth investor, these concerns really don't bother me. And in fact, I'm actually hoping it provides opportunity. So I'm excited to see where this portfolio can go in the future. And like always, again, if you'd like to be able to download this spreadsheet and also get access to the ticker data add-on in Google Sheets that allows you to automatically import stock financials, then you can head over to tickerdata.com at the link in the description. So with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.